I gotta figure out my life, dude. That has to be like one of the most eventful pre five minutes before podcast I've ever had in my whole life. Figuring out like which cable is not working, where this buzz is coming from. Then we get a phone call. Then I forget that there's a piece of gear I'm missing to make this whole thing happen. And then we switched out of XLR. We did. Um, switched out of XLR to figure out I just needed to turn my microphone on. Which really is something I should figure out. Like it's <laughs> it's the second or third time that a guest has had to figure out that a mic- problem with the mics that I just didn't figure out. Because well, I, I was thinking about it. Uh, we were about to char- change to the third XLR. We're like, man, no, this XLR definitely works. And it's like, let me inspect this thing. Let I me- use that XLR. That's like the one I use for the most important stuff. That's the one I use when I have my gizmo that I plug into like front of house to record audio at concerts. Right. So it's like, that's the most important. These can fail. Uh, it's okay. We could lose a mic here. Life would be okay. But if that one fail, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, and that's why I was like, I know it. I know it works. That's like my one. Hell that's yeah, your go-to. I love it. Man, I am so happy you're here. I've spent so many nights on your couch with your cats, and tonight I get to have you on my couch with your my cats. cats, dude. Yes. My basement. I'm stoked to have you here. Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy from New Orleans, all yes. the way up in Connecticut for the weekend. Dude, how you living? Hi, I'm great. I'm stoked to be here with you. Um, yeah, I... I haven't been to Connecticut in like six or seven years. Hell yeah. So this is nice. And you got to see the most rural part of it. I'm not going to give away, I'm not going to dox the address of where you guys are staying, but uh, you're currently on tour with a band called Tank and the Bangas. So we'll get into them in just a moment. But yeah, I picked you up from your Airbnb this morning. And it's in like the craziest middle of nowhere part of Connecticut. It's like the last house on the left vibes. Yeah. Like 100%. you have the most skewed 100%. idea of what this state is right now because you just saw like the craziest part of it. And it's like 95% of the state doesn't look like that. But there's one corner. And that's the one you found. And, and we had a, a guy drive past us uh, doing a wheelie on a dirt bike. We did. And we're like, that's Connecticut <laughs> right there. I guess like, so. This is what Connecticut has to offer. Uh, last house on the left vibes, a lot of hills, yep. and people doing uh, wheelies on ATVs. Uh, this is absolutely not a podcast story. So uh, for preface here for anyone listening, the other weird part is like normally people come over and I get right into the podcast. So all of our small talk kind of happens live on air. Me and Jim have been hanging out all day. We've already been chatting up a storm, getting through everything. Uh, so I feel like we're coming in hot here. But the for other bad experiences, a quick story that is a great story and probably maybe not ideal for this podcast. But uh, in my old house, we had some family come from Chile. My mom's from South America. So we had some family come visit. Uh, and like the first or second day they're there, there's like this huge SWAT FBI thing. And what happened was in our old neighborhood, this guy like kidnapped his wife and then locked her in the house. And then like the whole like police force SWAT, like the whole nine yards is there. And he had like previously burned down another house that this woman lived in and was starting to burn down this one. It was saying it was booby trapped. So it's like the first day our family is here from another country, from the other side of the world. And we live in a nice area. It's all great. And the only time ever that anything has gone crazy wrong is their it's first, the first day. day. Yep. So well, never a domo. I mean, better to see a dirt bike than see all that. For exactly. all I know, I may end up cutting that out, but I'll probably leave it in because it no. is amusing. No, that, um, that's crazy. Uh, we touched on tanking the banging stuff. So. You're on tour. You're in the area. Yeah. Talk to me about what's going on right now. You got a couple of weeks, a couple weeks of travel happening. It, no, it's been good. Um, really quick before we touch on the tank. Please. Uh, I had uh, with moving with uh, Dayla and Jake whenever we first moved in together, uh, bringing stuff off the U-Haul. And we had like a Terminator blow or something, but it was just a loud boom. Yeah. And we weren't even in the neighborhood 10 minutes. And we were like, yo. Like, something just went down. Yeah. Like, so yeah. like is this going to be all right? And we've been great. Yeah. But um, I can relate. Too. It's like everything's been great for the most part for the past few years, but it's that first day. I just remember, like, what did I just do? Yeah, like, is this gonna be okay? Yep. Um. So, anyways, yeah. Um, um, hell yeah, dude. Never sorry. a dull moment. Just like, just like on the road, dude. Never a dull uh, moment. I know it's so, been, yeah. I know it's been crazy. I've been all over the place, dude. So on the road, uh, Tank and the Bangas. So, um, Tank and the Bangas based out of New Orleans. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I'm based out of New Orleans as well. Um. I got affiliated with Tank and the Bangas. I work for a, a backline company. Um, they're called True South Rep. What's up, True South? True South. <laughs> shout uh, out. Shout out. They listen to every episode, dude. This is yeah, probably their favorite they, one. Yes. They, well, it's going to be their favorite <laughs> one. Uh, and they're going to listen to everyone prior to that. So, oh, anyways, yeah. uh, I work for this backline company. Basically, for anybody who doesn't know what backline is, um, sometimes artists fly in. And if they fly in, or you just need to rent, Something specific that you may not have, like you can, we, we have amps and instruments, guitars, drums, just anything. And you can rent it for a daily rate or a weekly rate, mm-hmm. monthly rate. Um, so artists who fly in will supply a whole backline for them 
and they can just show up with their guitars or show up just and so now it's like with some you, drumsticks. You have like a warehouse full of all the drums in it. the world and all the different stuff you could ever ever hope to have. Hey, and I, I actually, uh, that's my nine to five when I'm home off the road. Like I maintain all the gear and shop and keep up with inventory and all Let's that stuff. Let's dive in so. right there, dude. Uh, so obviously you're a drummer by trade. You've drummed your whole life. I know it's a part of your identity at this point. It's a core part of your identity. You're Jimmy the drummer. Uh, how is working with drums nine to five? Has that changed the way you appreciate the kit? Has it changed the way you look at the kit? Has it become a business or have you gotten into the nitty gritty and appreciated it on a new level? Like, yeah, how has it changed the way you approach drums? It's a double edged sword. Yeah. hundred percent. I, I very much, it's still my passion. Um, but when it becomes work, it, it, you know, it changes that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I still, I still love it. I haven't been able to play this year as much drums as I'm used to because mm -hmm. um, sometimes work can, can change that. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, a drum tech doesn't get to play drums too much on tour. Even the drummer, other than playing their set, mm -hmm. doesn't really get to play much drums. They're such um, a weird instrument. Yeah, I think, it's, like, it's, it's a whole thing. It's hard to imagine. It's, I don't know, like as a soccer player to me, it's like soccer is great because everyone can get into it. It's so accessible. And drums are strange. It's like it's hard to come by a drum kit. And even if you have a kit... It's hard to find a place to play it if you live in the city, which is I know what your deal is. It's like yep. you technically probably have enough space for a drum set, but you don't live in a place where that's going to be possible with neighbors and exactly. yeah, sound ordinances and all that stuff. And it's such a yeah, you can sing or you anywhere. have cool parents. Also true. Or you have cool parents. Yeah. Um, but also yeah, you don't always live in a place that's it's accessible. Um, I was telling you earlier, I rent you know a spot with a couple other drummers, uh, just one drummer currently, but. We just share a spot just for drums. No PA, no rehearsals, just a place for us to go play our drums. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's some, some, something you have to do sometimes. But um, drums have always been a part of my life. Uh, I'd love to tell you, you know, a deep dive into it. But I, uh, damn it. Dude, I just the, the coolest part about coming down here is thoughts just leave your brain. Like you get into a sentence that you yeah. have finished a hundred times in your life. And, and, just and somehow can't. in this moment, it's like, ah, no, it's, I don't know. It, this is the hundred first time. It's going to happen. Um, well, I appreciate it. It's great. Um, but you're on tour with Tanking the Bangers. So Tanking the Bangers are an R&B <laughs> and soul band that we deviated away from. Yep. Uh, but they're sick. So I'm obviously new to them. I'm, yeah, I think we're both from the hardcore metal world is more of our home. So. Uh, this is something new, and I found their NPR Tiny Desk performance, and they're so much fun, dude. I was just like, just smiling watching. They're just like a, a, a what's it called? A contagious like energy, a contagious positivity about them. Yes. It's so much fun to to consume. Incredible people, dude. Incredible people. Um, they've been great to be around, and the musicians are crazy. Um, just super talented. I love uh, the spontaneity every night that they. They never have the same set. People ask for printed set lists, but they don't have any because every night's a different set. And um, they play some stuff with tracks, some stuff without tracks. They're they're very they do what they want when they want, and I love that. How does that make your life harder then? Where you're, I think I would assume what you're normally used to is after the third song I'm going to do this, or on the fifth song I'm going to do this as the tech. And now you're saying the set list is changing every night. I mean, the demands are changing. The the things they're expecting of you are changing all the time. One hundred percent. You just need to be able to adjust and adapt to everything on the cuff and it's what i'm kind of learning with this you know every job or gig you do is different um for them i'm still kind of getting in the rhythm with them we're two weeks in now um but no they, they they have a great way of doing things and as you said they change it up i just have to be ready to you know uh be be ready to be on it i guess uh anyways last night uh, I was blowing up. Tank has a red balloon that she brings out every night. And uh, we were doing a different intro, which doesn't require the balloon anymore, but I'm so used to making sure that she has one or two balloons ready. She was like, well, no, we're not doing that intro tonight. So we scratched that. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. Just be ready just to, you know, whatever. Anyways, speaking of the red balloon, I carried the balloon pump to Canada recently and forgot to put it in the truck when we got back to the States. And this is a big balloon, dude. So they ended up having to blow it up by mouth. And how, that was like, a whole how big thing. are we talking? Like basketball size? Like 10 basketballs? Like like beach ball? Uh, three times a beach ball, dude. Like it's Damn. a big, <laughs> it's like it's arms, arms length. Like I'm not, oh, even, yeah. I'm not even messing with you. So no blowing shit. that up yes. manually is, a, dude, is, is an ridiculous. all day task. Yeah. And yeah, I felt really bad that I was like, I forgot the pump. And 
I just I try to stay on it the best I can, but you're human and stuff's gonna happen. And yeah. Um. Anyways, but they've been a pleasure to watch every night, and their drummer's incredible. Um. It's just yeah, it's been it's been a pleasure. What does teching entail for you? So I know it's building the kids, getting stuff set up, and I think an interesting piece there is that as a drum tech, it's not like you do the same thing on every tour. You're doing what the drummer wants for you on this tour. So whatever his current setup is, you have to learn each in and out of where each piece of gear should be yeah. and how they would like it arranged and how many sticks they want arranged and whatever other little nuances that I'm totally ignorant to on drums. Like, no, what is a what are normal responsibilities for you to take care of over the course of a show or in a given night? Like, what do you Ooh. what are you in charge of? Um, so. Every band you work for, like you said, every drum set's different, so it's it's learning what they want, and um, it's not always what you want, you know. And that's yeah. with every instrument, people have a a tendency sometimes to lean towards what they want, and sometimes you just need to be open minded, and that's not the way that you know, that's not the way that they want it done, and let's respect and do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you a, kind of a daily regimen of how I do things. Um, for us, we do the the staying in hotels mostly recently uh to the venue close to the venue um we'll wake up early have a really early lobby call get some breakfast get on the road um when we do a load in we'll dump the trailer um i'll usually head inside so we can designate um gear in the right place and um we have four members on our crew we have a tour manager front of house a monitor engineer and a backline tech me um, monitors for anybody who doesn't know is um, everybody runs off in-ear monitors so uh, his name's Noel and he side stage just to make sure that all, all their levels are right in their ears that's also so like they're frequency stuff right so it's exactly the channels and all like the, I remember as a kid you have your walkie talkies with different channels on exactly them. It seems like it's, and it's, it's if, if, if it's super staticky and feed and has a ton of feedback like that's that's it sucks, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's his job to make sure that everything's clear and um, and nice for them. Uh, and then obviously Scott does front of house and makes sure they sound good to the audience. And Hannah's our tour manager, and she makes sure that everything uh, flows smoothly. But anyways, we 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 get all the gear set up uh, as a backline tech. I set up everybody's gear uh, for the most part. I get help, a little help from the band, um, which is great. But it's uh, right now, two keyboards, uh, a bass rig. Um, we have auxiliary, which is like sax, flute, um, a little percussion. We have a background vocalist, a drummer, and tank, main vocalist. So just making sure they're all taken care of. And uh, we have like a nice rug set up. They have these beautiful like red rugs and have to make sure that they're taped down because they dance a lot and I can't have people slipping on rugs. And their drummer... Um, he's great, uh, requires a lot of attention because he hits really hard. Um, but also with going to what you said earlier, I do a lot of research. Like I'll go on Instagram and I'll, I'll take a bunch of screenshots of their setups and go on YouTube and, and I, I'll do whatever I can to try and get, um, an idea ahead of time. I'm laughing so. at the teacher in middle school who would have told you that Wikipedia is not a source. And now you're like, yo, Instagram is a source. <laughs> Instagram <laughs> is a source. It. Like, you know, people use TikTok for everything now. Mm -hmm. So you can do the same thing for Instagram. Yeah. I've gone on there. Uh, I've done that for other drummers that I've been able to tech for, for the backline company that I work for. Uh, going back to that, that's how I met uh, Tank and the Bangas. I was just, I was driving for a gig. Um, ended up getting uh, in contact with them and, um, you know, if you guys ever need a drum or a backline technician, please let me know. And um, a few weeks later, ended up getting a call and say, hey, like, we'd love to take you out on tour this summer. Um, and I talked to their management and had a Zoom interview and everything kind of worked out. And it's been about two weeks and I've really been enjoying myself. Hell yeah. Uh, I know in the past you've teched for a lot more like metal bands, a lot more of our genre. Now this is an R&B soul thing. Like, what are the differences in what you're asked to do? I mean, I'm sure the kit is different, the music, the, the, the end product is so different, but how much of the middle is different? Is it all kind of the same? I mean, they're musicians. It's the same instrument, I guess, they're playing, but it's right. utilized so radically differently. Uh, everybody requires a different amount of attention. Um, uh, with working for a metal band, I'm working for three people. I used to tech for a band called Dying Fetus. Um, freaking legends. Love those dudes. Um but with them, it's it's three people. It's a guitar rig, a bass rig, and uh, and a drum set. Now the drum set is is massive, but it's put together by two racks um, that actually ride in the trailer. 
uh, already attached together. So it kind of, you know, it doesn't, it makes your life a lot easier whenever you can just pull it off the trailer wall mm -hmm. and just attach a couple arms and get to business instead of building the rack. When I went to them with Europe, in Europe, we had to build the rack every day, and that kind of stinks doing it from scratch. But yeah. it's just the workload. Um, both of them have big kits, but one of them is more like a gospel R&B with a, a fat snare drum, and one of them has triggers because it's death metal. And, you know, just learning, like, their electronics and how everything's run. They're, they're different. It, they're very similar, but they're very different. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's just learning and trying to be versatile and be able to work for any type of genre that wants to hire me. I and think the flexibility is really incredible there, really significant. Because I think most of the people you. on tour, like, get by by doing the thing that they are great at. And I think what a great tech is great at is being flexible and accommodating to whatever other people need. You need which to. Is Different than I think artists, I think we're inherently stubborn. We're inherently like set in our ways. And we want to do things yep. our way. And your job is to forget all of the ways Jimmy does stuff. Yep. And, and says, just none of this matters. Whatever Wherever they, you put whatever your they snare want, drum, who Pass cares? the job description, dude. Like I'm a backline technician, but it's like if I need to help stage manage here or if I need to help with merch or mm -hmm. if, I, if there's anything that needs to be helped out with to help the day flow more smooth, mm -hmm. that's why I'm here. You know, that's what my job is. So uh, be a nice person work hard and it will just it will go a long way just do whatever you can uh say yes a lot you know if it doesn't put you out it doesn't really hurt you or mess up the camp that you're working with like help people like do what you can it goes a long way people are always watching the industry small mm -hmm. you know um the how i got my first gig i just did a nice act of kindness and just help somebody roll a drum case at Warp Tour. And the guy ended up bringing me to lunch and catering or breakfast and catering and offered me a merch job. And I would have never started merching or started any of that, which led to teching. But just be a nice person. Yeah. Don't be a shithead. I, dude, I, it's, it's when I was hard. first starting, I got the advice of like being a good hang is like the most important, probably the hardest part of this job. It is. Which, as I was getting a camera, was almost insulting. Of like, you're telling me that all this hard work I'm doing doesn't matter if I'm fun to be around. <laughs> but it is true. It's like, no. it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how good you are at setting up a drum set if no one wants to be in the same room as you. If no one wants to have you next to them setting up their drum set, if no one can trust you to come help out in the thing in the middle of it, like, you're not getting any jobs. And, and it's right. shocking to me, like, how it, you have to know the drum set. You have to be competent in what you're doing. Like, all those things are important too. But the first level is just being fun to be around. And it's shocking how far you can get just by being fun to be around. And you get the opportunity then to osmos and take things in from other people who right. are good at their job. And you it's need like, to be open-minded. Yeah. So if, if you want to be closed-minded, stay off the road. Because you need to be able to, like I said, adapt to any situation. And yeah, being a, being a hang is, is most of it. Like, dude, you're with these people 24 hours of the day. Mm -hmm eat with these people you sleep with these people you shower with them like you guys need to be able to get along <laughs> for day be... you don't shower too close to them <laughs> yes you know what i'm saying uh not too close separately <laughs> but i'm just saying you're, you're always with these people yeah. and need to respect them and um there's just a fine line yeah. there's a fine line with it a little closer you're... to you yeah um you can all yeah awesome no but there, there's a, there's a fine line and you, you, you learn along the way, you know. Uh, what changed between Jimmy, the kid at Warped Toys, helping the guy roll the drum tech, and you're, you're green, you're hoping for a thing, and you finally get that merch change? I mean, are you still that, whatever, 16-year-old kid, 18, 20-year-old kid, whatever that was? Like, what has changed between then and now you've been to Europe, you've been around the U.S.? Like, yeah, I mean, there's still the excitement in you, but you have, yeah, you have to grow over that time. I, I, still, I still have that spark in me. Yeah. Um, so I, I all, this all stemmed, dude, from playing music and being in a local band and, and wanting to do that ultimately. And that, that still is the goal. Um, that still is the goal uh, overall with all this teching. You know, that's what I'm trying to brand and what I'm trying to do. And I'm not going to stop until I'm drum teching for Tommy Lee. You know, like it's I, that, that's what I want to do. But I, I would be lying if I said... I don't want a session gig and want somebody to hit me up to come play drums for them because mm -hmm. that's something I want to do. I want to be on the stage. Um, it's hard sometimes not to get jaded and be bitter 
Um, Because I work for all these people and I I go to 200 plus shows a year. I Mm -hmm. work 200, 250 shows a year. And how many? Yes, sir. That's an insane number. Damn. I didn't realize it was. I knew you were at shows a lot. I know you tour a lot, but I didn't realize that, yeah, Between Tours was also filled with that many shows. I mean, 250 is a ton of shows. That's, right. That, um, Steve Aoki is always the guy in my head who I think it plays over 300 shows a year, and it's always stuck. Like, that is an insane number. Right. Um, and I think there's been years where you played 400 shows a year, which is even crazier. Um, but 250 for someone who's not, like, <laughs> respectfully, you're a long way from Steve Aoki. No, <laughs> So 250 is an insane number. Yeah, and I just... And that, that was between being a stagehand, too. Like, of there's, course, yeah. there's been so many tears to this, dude, over the years with being in a local band or being a stagehand or being a, a merch manager, being a tech. Like, I wanted all of it. I wanted mm-hmm. a piece of all of it so I could learn and, and get, you know, that, that's the way you could be an asset to anybody is to be as versatile mm-hmm. um, as possible. And um so anyways, I still have that spark, dude. I, I still enjoy it uh, very much. Um, I played with a group called Hollow City for a long time. Um, very much enjoyed it. And we traveled Warp Tour for like a month, dude, with, I think it was like 2,000 CDs, dude. Five bucks a piece and just sling, what are you traveling in? slinging what, them, dude. Dude, we were... Day? We were in old, like, early, uh, like 1994 uh, 15-passenger van. Uh, we named him Muhammad. He was, he was badass. But we got him in San Antonio for, like, $1,200, $1,300. And then drove him for a month across the country, and, and he killed it, you know. And it was, it was great. So, anyways, we very much enjoyed uh, that van, and it did a lot. And, you know, I still see him in New Orleans every now. That's and crazy. And then I, st- I still see that van. Um, so anyways, moving on, we, we bought this van, we, we, we got these EPs, got them all made with the little paper, you know, it was nice. It was Which is probably pristine. also real money for you guys back then. Like that's it, oh, dude, more, yeah. most of your life savings going it into was. these CDs. Yeah. Um, and then I think we actually had a little help, you know, with printing them and mm-hmm. it was like, well, Hey, once you guys sell them, mm-hmm. just give me some of the proceeds or sure. whatever. So anyways, we, we did this warp tour and Dude, we slept where all the other bands did because we were just in a van, so nobody knew that we weren't on yep. the tour. We were actually were a barnacle band because we just attached to the mm-hmm. tour and just followed it. And it was great. And it was so grungy, eating Little Caesars pizza every day, sneaking in. Like, uh, my buddies in Kane Hill were on the tour, and I would just, like, carry their instruments to stage just so I can get, like, in mm-hmm. to get a free ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Those were the days, okay. but... Um, I, I did it all because I wanted a chance just to, to see the stage and, and prove mm. that my band had a shot. And uh, it just, it, it seemed there were, there were more ways to get on the road and, and chase that dream other than just being in a band. And even though I love my band and I love playing drums and it's something that uh, I'm really passionate about, uh, I still want to be able to see places and do things, mm-hmm. and and now this with drum tech, and I'm I'm that gives me the opportunity to see these things and do these things that I've never been able to do, and it kind of started with merching, and I, mm-hmm. I very much enjoyed that, and got to do so much, dude, and see the country for the first time, see the states, and go to Vegas, and go mm-hmm. to California, and yeah. New York, and Niagara, and do all those things, um, and then with teching, you know. Uh, because of how much I care about the instrument, I care so much now about the technical side and how drums sound good, and I want them to look good. Like, I want them to be in the most pristine condition because of me. Mm-hmm. Like, I take a lot of pride in that, that mm-hmm. um, I want to put out a product for whatever artist I work for that I'm going to give it 100% every night, and you guys are going to have what I expect, you know? And it's actually kind of funny because then it comes to me having a show, and it's like, old heads and dirty symbols or whatever. I'll make sure everybody else is clean and ready to go. But for me, it's like, dude, you're a drum tech. You should, you should have this stuff like, like ready. And you know, I, I lack on my part, but there is something there uh, with my video gear, with all my cables, like when I'm packing extension cords and I'm packing up surge protectors, like all the, all the lights, like all of the stuff that gets packed up at the end of the day, I can always tell if I packed it or someone else packed it. Cause yeah. if it's done well, it was done by someone else. <laughs> And if it's usually when I open the box, it looks like 
I don't know, the closet from, was it Zaboomafu as a kid, where you just open the closet oh and all God, stuff yeah. falls on you? Like, that's what most of my bins look like and feel like when I packed them. And it's, it's kind of the same thing you're saying with your drum set. It's like, yeah, you know when, I don't know, you're willing to put in the extra mile for someone else, but for some reason when it's your stuff, it's like, yep. whatever, just, just get it done. Get it in happen. there. Get in there. Which I don't, like, I don't know, the, the psychology in my brain is like, that's got to be not ideal for both of us. Like, it's got to be a reflection de- of, def- like, we should not. value ourselves as much as we're valuing what we're putting into other people, right? Like, it should be the, the same level of care. But somehow when it's someone else, it's so much easier. And I guess it's maybe we over overvalue the details where we don't want to let them down, but we know if this thing is a little off in our own, it's like, I don't care. It doesn't Well, it's also one of those things where if you, you mess up their gear, then <laughs> it's messing up somebody else's shit. Yeah. You mess up yours, it's like, all right, well... I did that because I was of my negligence, but yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, let me go. Let me say, let me then you mo. Let me yeah. then mo you now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a weird thing. And then of course you, uh, I think the other piece of that that was interesting is the flexibility of it all. And I think that's the other key to most of what we do. And for me, it's, yeah, it's starting in photo and realizing like, I love taking photos at concerts. Um, and I kind of resonated. You were saying that you just wanted to weigh into the industry. And that was kind of my thing. And I think of told the story at length here, but the short version is that I kind of start learning guitar is like, I like this music, but I don't have any way into it. But I want to be involved in it. And then as I'm learning guitar, I quickly realize that I'm not great at guitar and I'm starting to film guitar covers and I love filming the covers. I love editing them, but I hate learning the song to get to filming the cover. And so at some point there, obviously it clicks. So it's like, oh, maybe the camera part is a part I should look into. Right. But it comes from a similar origin of like, I just loved this scene. I loved this world. I like the people. I was just enamored by the whole thing as a teenager. And then it's like, yeah, what are the what are the ways in? And for you, it's you know, it starts drumming, and then it's merch teching, and I guess it it all is all rooted in a love of music that is yeah similar to mine. And of course, you express it through music, and mine's been yeah with no musical ability at all. <laughs> um, but um, it, but if it wasn't for music and your photo journey, then mm-hmm. we would have never met. Yeah, and it's just as we were talking about earlier before the podcast, it's it's crazy how music can do that mm-hmm. just because of my love for music and because mm-hmm. of your love for music and uh, the band that you were working for, their love of music mm-hmm. that we have a friendship now. Yeah. And I think and the, what I've really enjoyed in talking to people in your chair is like, it's the, it's the boldness. It's the, it's the inside stuff that brings it all together. It's like, it's not like we're all baseball fans. It's not like there's some surface, like definable thing that ties us all together right. in the context of the, yeah, with, with call at home, rest in peace now. And I think, uh, yeah, with call at home now or with the guys like the Louisiana guys, like there's not a, not a thing I put my finger on. I'm like, this is the thing we all have in common. Like, I just, I don't know. And as I talk to you guys more, it it's that it's this idea of like, I don't know how I'm going to, drum tech for whoever you mentioned some name, some big name. I'm drawing a blank on who it was, but it's like, yeah, I don't know what that road looks like, but I'm going to go figure it out. I'm going to be bold enough and brave enough to stare down this and understand that it's going to go wrong. It's going to take me away from my family. It's going to do these things that aren't great, but I'm going to see this through. And I think that's the interesting part is like with, with call at home, it was their willingness to drive down to Louisiana to believe that Keel and Landry were going to do something for them. Right. And it's like, I love those guys. I believe that too. But it's crazy. Like it's crazy to go that far in pursuit of a song. Like it doesn't logically make sense in my brain, but it requires that like, no, I think this is worth, I'm going to see it through. And it requires me to sign on to that requires you guys as a band to, yeah, go through all the same work. And I think that, that like almost delusional, uh, belief is what ties us together. I think that's the cool part here. Right. Um, there's also so much work behind the scenes that just gets, uh, not that is behind the scenes for a reason, Mm -hmm. but there's so much, uh, so many songs, so many ideas, so much that gets turned down. So many first drafts of a music video. So many first drafts of a music video. Um, There's so much that happens that people aren't aware of that makes this happen. Like not only do you write a song, but then like, I need to get album art for it. I need to, you know, I need to distribute it. I need to, uh, get music videos done for it, mm-hmm. and then I, now I need to start making merch TikTok promotion shows and Spotify. promotions. Correct, and there's so much that goes in, into it that mm-hmm. people don't understand. Um, and then we get to the teching side of it, where it's like you get to a point where not only is that so much, but it's like that is so overwhelming that I need somebody to take this load off because mm-hmm. I have to take care of all this. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, it's a beautiful thing, man. I uh, I still wonder, like, you got this, dude? Like uh, you said earlier about fixing things, and that's what that's what Tekken is. Tekken is just being ready to fix whatever they need. And uh, on this tour, 
there's been a few things that I'm just like, that really just happened? Like, I cannot, like, I had a hi-hat stand, dude, collapse into two pieces. And I had to fix it. And, like, it was first song in, he said, hi-hat. And I looked down, and the thing's in two pieces. I'm like... The metal stand that has the two plates on it, that stand is folded in two, so not broken in two. So the rod that connects through... Yeah separated from the foot pedal so the foot pedals okay. at a 90 degree angle okay. separated from the rock okay. and i just hear hi-hat and yeah. this is my first night with them by the way mm-hmm. i look down and i see it in two and i'm like what do i do <laughs> like all right this is this is this is it like this is the job description so you need to you need to get on it so i, I try like gaffing it and it's not gonna work you know uh the the threads is he still it's playing just too at this much. Point? He's still playing, dude. This first song in, you know. And I'm already a nervous wreck because it's my first night with these guys. Um, I just know I'm about to go on tour with them. They're doing a local gig at home. So, as I said, like, if I, if I can't do the Instagram thing, if I have a chance to work one of your gigs, like, yeah, let me come out and get familiar before we just, like, fly out mm-hmm. first day and get our feet wet. Like, I love, like, you know, we didn't have any rehearsal dates or anything. Mm-hmm. So, um, anyways... I hurry up and I'm I'm laying down on the stage trying to fix this this stand um and it's not working and I'm trying to be calm anyways I take the hi hat uh the symbols off of the stand entirely take the rod I take the pedal hold it up and screw it into place and put the symbols back on tighten them and get the heck off stage and it worked and it's one of those where it's like Damn, I never anticipated that happening, but I fixed it, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's and that's a main part of the job. I had the other night, same thing with like a kick beater. The beater is the the part that hits the the drum head. He was like, "Dude, I need you to move it. Like, I need more, I need more angle." And I'm like, "You're, pl- you know, I'm thinking you're playing right now. Like, okay, that's what you want." I, I'm like laying down on my stomach and I wait for a break. And, you mm-hmm. know, I unloosen it, get it right, right. He feels that I'm there, so he stops. I tighten it as much as I can, and I get the hell off stage. Um, so it's just little things like that, just being ready. If a cymbal falls off, if a cymbal stand falls over, if a mic falls onto a drum, if a wire goes out, like, there's so much that can happen. And I had a, a problem when I first started doing this of just, like, I didn't even want to sleep or nap because I'm so worried about all the things that could go wrong. Mm-hmm. You just need to understand that things are going to go wrong. And uh, like my grandfather said, it's, it's you know, don't worry about what you can't control, but just how you react to, to, to what it is. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and, I'm trying to, and I'm trying to take that and put it day to day and not let anything get the best of me. And everybody's out here just trying to work and they're missing their families. And just do whatever you can to make their life easier. And... Um, yeah. And I enjoy it, man. I find I find something really special in it, and um, yeah, I'm I'm I have a great support system back home, and they make it you know doesn't make it uh, any easier like leaving them to come do this. But I appreciate them supporting me, trying to see things through and see the world and do some things that my parents didn't get to do and my family didn't get to do. Um, so yeah, no, I uh, I'm thankful for this journey. Mm-hmm. I'm super thankful for it. It is, and I think the you mentioned kind of the the flexibility you have to have and the resilience you have to have, and I think this job just beats it into you. This industry just beats it into you. Like there is there is no other option. I think I entered it as a planner, and it's like the more you try and plan, it's like you're fighting the current. Like that you just 100%. you can't plan, and then you can you plan to a degree. There's so much you can plan. And I we were talking before. It's like I I like having a plan just so I can deviate from it in the future. So I have some baseline. And it's like then I can go change, and I don't have to follow the plan. Right. But I like having a plan in place. And just like okay, this is. If nothing else goes right, at least I can depend on this. And probably along the way, I'll vary and find better options. But, like, it requires, yeah, I require that plan. But it's like I also have to accept that that plan doesn't mean anything. Just because I say this video is going to last from noon to 6 p.m., we might not be out at 6 p.m. Like, it might be 4. It could be 8. And I'm trying to be accurate and, like, playing those things. But it's like the goal here is to get the thing done. The goal here is not to be right. done in six hours. The goal here is not whatever whatever is the goal physical. is for it to be the best it could be mm-hmm. so however long that takes within reason yeah but that's that's the goal um in in everything that we do or should be 
is to to be the best that we could be is to in 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 everything and provide the best product that you can Hell um, yeah. i you know i don't want to get all into the the tiktok stuff and all yeah. that but um you know tiktok loves the raw stuff mm-hmm. and you know i love that anybody can throw together a video and it can it can get some vir- vir- virality and be seen um but I, I don't know how that is for guys like you you like who spend a lot of time to make sure these things like look as great as they do and for some people just to to throw i don't um, know i mean i've put a lot of time or not necessarily a lot of time but it's definitely something i think about of like yeah i mean the tiktok thing is strange and it's strange in that people want raw content that seems to write me out of the picture i think the the first thing i've come to accept is that it's like the rising tides lift all ships kind of thing it's like really what's happening is we're just focusing on video in a way that we haven't before video is now the primary medium where maybe it was photos before maybe it was text even before that like we are now fully in a place where video is the default primary and so in that case it's really valuable to me and my my value goes up in that market in that system right because i'm not uh, i'm not trying to do something that people don't understand the value of i'm doing something that people are already doing themselves every day and they can bring in me and say hopefully if if i can flatulate my own ego it's like they can bring me in to help them do it better than they were doing it before and that's a a cool place to be but on the yeah i think maybe the fearful side would be like no they're doing what i do and that's gonna replace me and it's like no it it gets out all the bullshit i don't want to do anyway like all the little uh like playthroughs are fun and playthroughs can be really fun but there are a lot of playthroughs that i think you can just do with an iphone in your bedroom and get most of the same result and save yourself the money and cut me out and like that's not the most creatively fulfilling thing in the world for me and again i'm generalizing and i think i have some playthroughs coming up that i am excited for like there are versions of that that are cool but there's a a surface level of that that yeah i don't think you need a professional camera for i think it's uh at the core level if you're a local band it's like your job is just to get exposure and you don't need me for that you can do that with your iphone now and so that's kind of cool it's like it it reduces some of the work that i don't want to do that's not exciting for for creatives like me to get done um so i don't know i think i i guess maybe if i really wanted to i could also argue the opposite that it's like yeah, it's going to a vertical, I mean, the vertical format is another one of like, in theory, people argue that it's getting rid of our cameras because all our cameras operate uh, horizontally and or landscape. Right. And we can rotate them, but it, yeah, there's challenges that introduced there, but it's like, I don't know. I think, I think a, a good set design goes way farther than the camera. And to me, it's like the, the fact that I know how to build a good set or light a good set or light a set that I am happy with, I guess good is subjective there. Um, but it's like, if I can do that in a way that I'm happy I don't care what camera you're going to use. I'll be able to figure it out better than the person who's just picking up a TikTok camera. Um, so I don't know. I think there's, I think no, it's I easy love to that. be scared you, of it, but you have, it can't be. You have values and stuff that yeah. can't um, just be replicated through yeah. um, that stuff either. And no, I, lo- I, I absolutely love your work though. I appreciate the work that you've done for us. I appreciate you, my guy. Um, we got 15 minutes left. So that is a perfect segue. Uh, we are on a little bit of time crunch here. We were, yeah, late getting started and we got some plans coming through tonight. This is kind of a spur of the moment thing. Yeah. Um, but hell yeah, dude. Uh, we're talking about the work I've done for you guys, which is a great little point to touch on here. Uh, so I want to chat about the two videos that I did for Hollow City, or I mm-hmm. guess uh, three. So the first one was the lyric video that I'm forgetting the name of the song. Two Legged Freak. That was Two Legged Freak. Hell yeah. Um, that one was sick. That one was fun, but that's not on my docket for today. <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Uh, I want to start with the overthinking video. Uh, so the overthinking video is a fun one. This is, I think it's kind of the second one we do, but whatever. It makes sense in this order for me. Overthinking is a fun video. So we film a lot of this in your living room, yeah. uh, which is wild because I slept in that living room the night before and the night after. So it was a game of getting this huge couch out of the way and all the little stuffs and plants. All of that while you have a fever of a thousand degrees or something. I, mean, you were I forgot so about sick. that, by the way. I forgot about that. I thought earlier <laughs> you, were, you were talking about how hot it was in the warehouse for Wasteland. It was but also no, hot I forgot there. Yeah. about the fever and just feeling like complete death and you were filming a music video. on the verge of dying in that video. Well, I was so worried about talking to our neighbors because I didn't mm-hmm. talk to the neighbors to let them know we were filming a music video with a drum set next door. Yep. And um, Peter's like, did you... Talk to the neighbors yet? And I'm like, I did not. I, mm-hmm. I'm going to talk to them tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then tomorrow comes a uh, shoot day. And it's like, hey, have you talked to him yet? And I'm like, uh, let's, let's just go. Let's just go. Let's do it. So anyways, um, yeah, it was filmed in my living room. Yeah. Um, 
You were we, so we, sick, dude. It we, was like, I, we, you were trying to put on a good face and you did a great job of like not, yeah, you didn't complain. You didn't suffer. Like you did everything. It was all great. It was like, great. You, were, you were a trooper. You were a warrior. But like, it was one of those like between takes, I would look at you and it was like, damn, I need to like cut a scene. I need to figure out how to get this thing yeah. done like yesterday. Well, it will also, we moved all of the furniture like mm-hmm. into the kitchen and to like the other parts of the house. Mm-hmm. So not only did we, we move all the gear, but then we had, we got your gear set up mm-hmm. and then did however many playthroughs we mm-hmm. did. And while feeling like crap, mm-hmm. and then, you know, this figured, is the third take, or fourth take, day of filming, yeah, and then take it down, and you know, I believe at the end of the day it looked like a living room again. Yep. Hey, I believe you that were. That was my promise very, to Dayla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like very uh, persistent about like, listen, like I'm yep. gonna make sure it's a dude. You even like spiked like where uh where like uh tapestries were mm-hmm. and like flags and stuff just because to make sure I, so what i we were playing this and yeah you guys are from new orleans so we were playing this remotely so i'm in connecticut calling you and like i totally understood for you living at home with a wife and a roommate and you know you live in a house it's someone's home and for me to call from halfway across the country and say hey we're gonna get a whole band in your living room and we're gonna clear out all the stuff is like yeah i could get why you know your wife's beautiful she's a great lady but like i could get why she'd be like no like that's a crazy idea like that is right. on paper a bad idea and so to me the only way i could justify that is like hey we're at 6 a.m and 6 p.m it's going to be an identical room and yep. what i do just give Straight me those up. 12 hours yeah <laughs> but i probably we were up two. early dude yep. i i woke up at like 8 a.m 8 30 so I yeah could, so i could start helping yep. you and you had already had like Yep. Couches moved and and, all, and I'm like, well, damn, dude. Okay, yeah. well, I see you. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, over overthinking. Uh, that was a fun one. Also, mm-hmm. all the shots you guys did in the Airbnb were incredible. If anybody hasn't watched that, mm-hmm. go check it out. It's Hollow City overthinking. Um. The uh, it was the, tight. The Airbnb came out so great. That's mostly Jackson, so it's like an overhead above shot. It's like these orange shots of the living room. The band shots there drive me nuts to this day. Like I love the the general setup of it. My dilemma, it's like there's like a shade of blue on you guys that I've fought for for so long and like tried different stuff to do. And like I went through so many versions before finally just being like, this is the best I can get it. And I like can't begin to put my finger on what is so wrong about it to me. But like I like downloaded different software, like I downloaded like an entirely different video editing software to try running it through that and see if like just somehow in a different layout of settings, if I could arrive at a result that I liked. Like I, I went through everything and stuff that I know and was like, none of this feels right. And it was just this weird dilemma of like, yeah, I don't know. I, I to this day, like it still bothers me. I was watching it before this and it's this weird thing of like, I, I like it and I wouldn't have sent if I didn't like it. But I remember having this talk with Zach of like just sending him more versions and eventually going back to the first thing of like, Something isn't right, and I still can't put my finger on it, but it's kind of a, a one that bugs me in hindsight of like, yeah, the Airbnb stuff I love so well, and so much of that living room I think is so cool. I love, yeah, I love a lot about it, but something in that color blue has driven me nuts to this Damn. day. Damn. Well, that's, um, that, that's hilarious, actually. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite videos that we ever did. I to, appreciate it. To be honest it. with I you. Think- um, I think there was a bunch of extra like shots from the back, like slow mo shots mm-hmm. that I really enjoyed. I, love I think those, you yeah. hate. Well, I thought you hated those at first. To be I honest. love those. Those okay. were a happy mistake uh, of that, like I'm getting set up. We forgot a cable for something, so someone goes to some, get somebody, something. Yep, yep. Somebody had to and make, so make a I'm run. just like waiting there, and I'm like, we were so far behind time. Of, like people were late, and just the whole day, like it's a video set, whatever things run behind. Exactly. And so by that point, we're so far behind schedule. And I'm like, I just need to film something. And so it's a Corey standing there and I just kind of like point the camera at him. And he's, I was like, yeah, stand here and play. And he like faced the wrong way. And he was swaying and he was swaying. And so he faced the wrong way. And my first time my head is like, fucking idiot. You face the camera. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then there's like, but a you're pause, like, Man, no, and I'm like, like wait, hang cool. on. I really like this. That's awesome. <laughs> so we had to do it. And yeah. That made the video that wasn't in the treatment at all. That was just a, uh, me being like, we got, we got to do something. We got to get but something it came on the board. Out great. I love those great. shots. I, um, um, oversharing here, but I, am um, trying not to overshare here, but I <laughs> recently tried to incorporate them in a project and it didn't end up making the final cut. Um, but we just watched something upstairs, uh, where those scenes were referenced as well. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, God, that's neat. Pete. The other it's video badass. we did uh, was for American Wasteland. Uh, yep. So the other Hollow City video, American Wasteland. I think this is the first one we did. Um, but the, <laughs> the big part of this video to me is that it's the first day we get down there. We get down or I fly down. We have like a day to chill. And this is the next day. I feel like there was some challenge of like getting the like machine shop found. I feel like we had some other warehouse and like ended up at this one or something. Yeah. No, uh, we really didn't have a location until yeah. like. 
48 hours before you came. It was one of those. Yeah. Like we were winging it. We had a few ideas. And then my buddy had a birthday party on at, at our friend's like mm -hmm. machine shop. It was like a blacksmith shop, which was so funny. And it was on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you were coming in on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. And we still hadn't had a location. And we went and we were looking. We are like, this is badass, dude. Like, can we... Mm -hmm. Can we use this? So we asked our buddy, like, hey, who owns this? Got us in touch with Dre and was like, hey, dude, like, can we film this week? And he, he was like, yeah, dude, what day you need? So flexible, so accommodating. Yeah. We got there and they have, like, the PA set up for us. Like, they, yeah, they're great. They great. clear the whole space out. Uh, but then in setting up for that video, uh, we're, we're there. We're good. It's, like, 100,000 degrees in that warehouse. So hot. So yeah. hot. So, so, so hot. And so I had you guys, like, waiting outside while I was brunting the worst of it inside, getting the thing set up. And so there's these like enormous industrial fans blowing in air to try and cool it down. So I'm alone in this warehouse and I go to like adjust a light and it's a, it's a C stand. So it's like this big metal pole that like folds inside of itself. What's that? Russian dolls inside of itself. Yep. Yep. And right as I loosen the thing, it just like, uh, there's a light on it. So the whole pole just slides down. And because my hands are so sweaty, it's so hot. The thing just slides right through my hand and it catches like this flesh of my pinky between two of the things. So I have this moment of like, I, my finger's stuck in this thing that I can't lift because my hands are so clammy and I can't yell for you guys because you can't hear me over the fans. And I'm like, I go to like yank my finger out and like as I pull it, I'm like, yo, if I yank this out, like I'm taking like a lot of skin off, like not like a normal amount of skin. Like I'm taking like a problematic amount of skin. I'm going to have to go to the hospital, get stitches. Like this whole trip, they're just going to pay for my hospital bill and fuck these videos and like it's just going to fuck everything up. And so like somehow I feel like I'm, I don't know. I managed to get my finger. I lift up enough and pull my finger out and it's just like bleeding so much. I remember. You and I remember it. like, I think I duct taped just like a paper towel for the night. Yeah. And then with, over, with some like gaff tape. Or yeah. Like e -tape, yeah. Like and then over the next couple of days was a disaster. But that was one of those like I was like a centimeter from like ruining the whole trip before it ever started. <laughs> Um, and then the second piece of that video was the the shotgun house, that cool colored house. Yeah, dude. Which was so sick. I remember showing up and thinking it was going to be like a normal layout of a house. I didn't know what a shotgun house was. We don't have them up here. Yep. And get shotgun down there. Shotgun house is straight through from the front to the back. You, straight through. You walk through. Mm -hmm. You walk in. It's room one. You roll, You walk, you know, next room. Yep. And then kitchen. Bathroom's off to the it's side. It's unbelievable it's, that those folks lived there, for real. Yeah. Like, I... I guess it's still available on Airbnb or Pure Space or wherever we got it from. So I don't want to give out their address. But like, also, if you can find that place, good for you. It was super pretty. It was unbelievable. It was, nice. it was the gorgeous space. Are awesome, uh, except for charging us that half an hour that we didn't. Oh yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> that we agreed. So, yeah. So any, anyways, we showed up 30 minutes early to the set, and we were just setting up stuff outside. I everyone's had, always late. So our call time was two o'clock and I told the guys, if you're there after noon, we get charged money. Right. And so everyone's there at noon and then everyone's pissed off at me for being so early, but it was like, whatever, at least we're finally here. No, be on time. Yeah. I, I've always heard, um, on time is late. Early is on time. So yep. be there early. And, uh, yeah, we get there I, early. We're just hanging out in the I van, know, just like I waiting know. for our rental to start. They, they come outside. That whole shoot. And they're was, like, you want to come in? And we're like, sure. Like, yeah. And you're inviting us in. And then, yeah, we wrap up and they send us an invoice for another whatever hourly fee of whatever the number well, was. Well, it's funny because they were saying, like, you want to come in? And we was like, yeah, of course. Like, we can get started. Yeah. And they were like, there we go. We got, got you. We got him. Got him, <laughs> got dude. So, that space yeah. was gorgeous. And it's crazy that people actually lived there. Um, but, yeah, that's the story of those two videos. I think that's kind of that. I love the American Wasteland video. That one I don't have any any notes on. Uh, the... The, um, the warehouse I really love. There's like a, a light that is casting like a linear pattern on the floor. Um, and I really liked how, how that came out. I thought it was an interesting interesting idea. No, they uh, that whole video was super badass, especially from the grungy to the bright mm -hmm. bright colors. I, I very much enjoyed it. So That was a fun one. Um, also, I was looking at the pictures recently you did for us at One Eye Jacks right before the, yes. the world uh, shut down. Yes. And those are beautiful. Hell yeah. So, Forgot about um, that show. That was a good time. But yeah. That was Whenever, the kickoff for Shipwrecked? Sh or Shiprock. Shiprock. Yep. Shiprock. Yep. And dude, Sick. that that was a night. That, that was, was a great night. night. That was a good time. So um, Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. We are right about at our cutoff when homies will be arriving. That's awesome. Soon. I'm excited. I'm excited. Perfect time, dude. We get to have some friends over. Um, my guy, what can people look out for? Where can people find you online? If they want to tell you that you are cute, that this was their favorite episode of all time, where do they go do that? That's awesome. So you guys can find me at uh, Jimmy the Drum Tech. Uh, 
If you want my business card, hit me up. Hell yeah. If you know anybody that needs a drum tech, holler at me, DM me. I'll send you my resume. Um, always looking to expand. Um, if anybody needs a drummer, too, you know, yeah. I'm always trying to get out there and play with some new people and um, and do that. So that's about it, man. Jimmy the Drum Tech on Instagram. Instagram. I don't tweet or anything, <laughs> you know. I don't really do the Facebook. So. Simple man. Yeah. Yeah. Just just get me there. Um, and that's what you can look out for, man. Uh, I'll be around with Tank and the Bangas. Um, we're finishing up this tour. We got three weeks left of this Red Balloon tour. We're out with Michael Franti right now as well. Um, hopefully some stuff towards the end of the year, which would be super cool. Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah, other than that, just be on the lookout. Hell yeah, dude. So to finally have you in my neck of the woods. We've hung out in New Orleans Plenty many a times, times, but you've never been up here. I'm stoked to finally have you, finally have you on my turf. I'm my stoked terms. to be here. Uh, I was telling you earlier, I've listened to so many episodes of Appreciate this, that, man. so I'm, I'm very excited to actually be here. Um, and thanks to Tank and the Bengals for giving me the opportunity to hang out here with my friend. Hell Get yeah. an episode in and meet some of his awesome friends. So Shout thank out you Tank. Guys. Let's go hang out with the kitties. Thank you guys. Later.